Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about static balancing. Now we know that in a system of rotating masses, the unbalances are produced if the center of mass it does not lie on the axis of rotation. So if by any means we ensure that the center of mass is lying on the axis of rotation, the system is said to be statically balanced right so let's see in this case we have taken masses three masses m1 m2 and m3 at radial distances r1 r2 and r3 and we say that taking x axis as the reference axis the angle for mass m1 is theta 1 so whenever we are uh, calculating or whenever we are denoting the angular position of any masses we do it counterclockwise from x axis so for mass 2 this is theta 2 and for mass 3 m3 this is theta 3. Now this system will be statically balanced if the forces the summation of forces acting on this system is equal to 0. That means the resultant of the centrifugal forces radially acting outwards on all these three systems that means m1 r1 omega square plus m2 r2 omega square plus m3 r3 omega square is equal to 0. So we say that summation of m r omega square should be equal to 0. Now omega is constant for whole system so summation of m r should be equal to 0. If this condition is satisfied we say that the system is statically balanced because the center of mass it is lying on the axis of rotation. The number of these point masses that we are denoting they can be anything in a machine. They can be the turbine plates or the disc or we can also say that if in a rotor right if we divide a rotor in n number of discs right so they may represent anything which is a rotating mass in the system. So if this condition is satisfied we say that yes these three masses are statically balanced but what happens if this condition is not satisfied the summation of force is not equal to zero for this system. We introduce a counter mass in such a way that the resultant of forces is equal to zero. That means m summation of m r omega square plus mc if, if uh, we say that the counter mass that we are introducing if it is denoting by mc at some radial distance rc and we say that its angular position is theta c right counter mass so we are uh, denoting it by suffix c if summation of mr omega square plus mc rc omega square is equal to zero that means by adding this counter mass we have shifted the center of mass to the axis of rotation and thus the system becomes statically balanced. So in questions we are usually asked that what mass should be added at what angular position it should be added to make the system statically balanced. So we have already discussed that if for these three masses m1, m2 and m3 this condition would have been satisfied the system would have been statically balanced but if this condition is not satisfied that means the resultant of forces on the system is not equal to zero the counter mass, the addition of the centrifugal force or the inertia force because of this counter mass will make the system statically balanced. So equation becomes m1 r1 omega square plus m2 r2 omega square plus m3 r3 omega square plus mc rc omega square is equal to 0. Now omega is same for all the bodies because these are parts of a single system. These point masses can represent different kinds of the rotating bodies like the turbine plates or the eccentric disc or anything right so they all are rotating with the same angular speed now if this so we can reduce this equation to this because omega is constant for all the values it's for the same for all the values so this becomes the new equation and we can write this equation as this that is summation of mr plus mcrc is equal to zero now if this condition holds true that means if the resultant force in the body is zero their vertical and horizontal components should also be zero. So we can also write this equation as summation mr sin theta plus mcrc sin theta c is equal to zero and summation mr cos theta plus mcrc cos theta c is equal to zero. Now because in this system we have taken three masses so we expand this equation one 
So it becomes this, which is m1 r1 sin theta 1 plus m2 r2 sin theta 2 plus m3 r3 sin theta 3 plus mc rc sin theta c is equal to 0. Similarly, you can write the equation for the cos factor for the three masses and the counter mass. So we get two equations, right? Now what we have to do, we have to calculate the counter mass and the angle at which this counter mass is being placed. Now one thing again I'm repeating which is very important that how we are taking the same sense of the angular positions. If, if we say that x is the reference axis, we are taking the angular positions counterclockwise from the reference axis. If you measure the angle like this, it will be wrong because the viewer is fixed at a particular position and from that position, all the angles are to be measured. You cannot change the orientation of angles or the sense in which you are measuring the angles for different masses. It has to be same. So first thing what we do is we square and add these two equations, right? If we keep one factor on left hand side and take the other factor on right hand side, so it becomes mc rc sin theta c is equal to minus summation of mr sin theta or vice versa. Whatever way you like, you can do that, right? So these are the two equations we get after squaring them. This, sorry, not this one. We get this equation from equation 1 and from equation 2. Now you see if you are like adding the terms you got from the counter masses which is mc rc sin square theta c plus mc rc cos square theta c and of course m and c are also in square. So you will get mc square rc square common and sin square theta plus cos square theta will become 1. So this is what we are left with is equal to if you are taking root on the other side, the square one. So it becomes under root summation of mr sin theta whole square plus summation of mr cos theta whole square. So whatever is the unknown, we can calculate with the help of this equation. Now to find the angular position of this counter mass, what we are doing, we are dividing these two equations. So it becomes mc rc sin theta c is equal to minus summation of mr sin theta upon mc rc cos theta c is equal to minus of summation mr cos theta and mc rc it gets cancelled and we get 10 theta c which is equal to minus summation mr sin theta upon minus summation mr cos theta. Now one very important thing is whatever is the angle that you get after calculating this mr sin theta and mr cos theta this sign is very important we do not cancel out these signs like this because these signs they tell us that in which quadrant is the angle line right if you know that in you must already be knowing that sin theta is the vertical component and causes the horizontal com so component so this is x and this is y right so on the basis of the negative and positive factor we can easily calculate that which in which quadrant will the angle lie and on the basis of that, we can get the answer.